Throughout human history, explorers have faced one constant life or death challenge, food. Whether it's sailing across the ocean or polar expeditions, the success or failure of a mission often comes down to, was there enough to eat? Food is often considered a secondary priority when it comes to the mission to Mars. But let's just assume all the rocket ships work, there's a huge engineering feat, but the food system fails, so does the mission. What will it really take to feed humans millions of miles from the Earth? Well, it's a lot more than just packing enough meals. The food system has to become self-sustaining and really survive a harsh environment, extreme radiation, and years without a resupply. From growing food in zero gravity to finding just the right balance between palatability and nutrition, each bite could be the key to survival. So just what is needed from a food system to unlock humanity's mission to Mars or doom it? When it comes to the mission to Mars, food is more than just fuel. It's a lifeline. It's a sense of normalcy and connection, a reminder to home. And even here on Earth, the military puts a strict limit of 21 days for just how long soldiers can rely on MREs or meals ready to eat, you know, simply because they have the same texture, there's not a great taste or flavor, and there's no fresh food. Not only does this impact someone's nutrition and, you know, physical health, but it also really impacts morale. Apollo astronauts knew this too. They ranked hot water as essential and non-negotiable on their 10-day lunar mission. 10 days! Why? Because they didn't want to be eating cold food for their entire mission. Which means that designing meals for Mars isn't just about packing in the right nutrients. It's about preventing mental and physical breakdowns in a crew that is millions of miles away from Earth. So what exactly has to be considered when creating this menu for Mars? And I found this really interesting research out of NASA's Johnson Space Center that outlines no less than eight challenges that must be met for the food system to be a success. We have to talk about safety first, and this is the same for any food that is produced on Earth. Like this is the number one rule they teach you when you become a food scientist. Safety can never ever be compromised. We have to make sure the food, the meals we're sending to Mars will not make one of the astronauts sick or potentially kill them. That would be catastrophic. I mean, we're sending what, like 10, 12 people maybe? Which means every single food or ingredient has to be rigorously tested for foodborne illness, for contamination, before we ever think about sending it up into space. Plus, once the astronauts start growing food themselves, we need to make sure this will also be safe to eat. Even just a one-time small outbreak or contamination could be disastrous because the food is connected to the astronaut's health, it's connected to the air quality, it's connected to waste management. So contamination in one area could lead to further contamination down the line when you have sort of a closed loop system in space. Next up, we have to talk about stability because in an ideal, perfect world, we would probably want to be able to make food that would be stable for five years before spoiling for this mission to Mars. Now, currently, NASA estimates that their space food, it lasts about a year, year and a half, which is not nearly long enough if we're going to spend, send people to Mars. Now, why stability is going to be such a big challenge is that we don't have the usual methods we'll have on Earth, right? We cannot refrigerate food, we can't freeze it. We, we don't have these usual methods we combine to keep food stable for longer. Now, you might be thinking, let's just throw a bunch of canned food on that rocket ship, right? That lasts for years, but that's way too heavy. That adds way too much weight and we won't be able to have 
all that weight, all that resources go only to the food supply. We're also dealing with this different environment, like really different temperatures on Mars in a lot of radiation that we're not used to packaging food and making it stable against. Plus just making a food stable so it doesn't spoil isn't the only factor. It of course has to be nutritious throughout those five years, which is a pretty big challenge and one we haven't fully cracked yet. If you're enjoying the science behind space food, you might also be interested in taking my course, Food Science for Beginners. It's an online self-paced course to teach you to think like a food scientist. You'll learn the basic molecules in foods, why different food ingredients are used, and how to preserve food and process it. If you're interested, you can find a link in the description. Here's another challenge. The astronauts need to actually want to eat the food. If it's not palatable, they're going to lose interest in eating altogether. And we've already seen this in shorter missions to the moon or to the International Space Station, where astronauts can experience menu fatigue because their diet is so bland and monotonous. And it's not just making meals that are really tasty or flavorful, it's having different textures, having variety, and making sure that it's really easy for the astronauts to prepare. Okay, I know nutrition is kind of a no-brainer, but we've even seen, you know, as humans have explored the Earth, that malnutrition has led to a lot of tragic examples from sailors really struggling with scurvy to different vitamin deficiencies and we really can't afford to make those mistakes when it comes to the first mission to Mars. On Earth, we really tend to take for granted just the wide variety of nutrients we can get from fresh fruits and vegetables basically any time of the year, right? I go to the grocery store any month of the year, I can get strawberries, blueberries, apples. Everything is always in season for me. But the issue with a long-term space mission is that there probably will not be that much fresh food, but also nutrients in these foods tend to degrade over time or lose nutrition as they're stored. So not only does space food have to be stable for years, it has to be nutritionally optimized for all those years, especially for the rigors of space travel, where microgravity is known to weaken muscles and radiation can cause the body a lot of oxidative stress it's really gonna be quite a feat to find this right balance of calories, vitamins, and minerals that help maintain an astronaut's health and performance over the long haul. Okay, we need to talk about resources and I guess specifically minimizing resources because in space, on a trip to Mars, every resource counts. It doesn't matter if it takes up mass, volume, it requires energy, Everything must be as efficient as possible, including the food supply. Every meal needs to pack a punch in terms of calories, nutrients, but also how much space does it take up and how heavy is it? And don't forget, waste management is part of the equation too. Is there any leftover packaging, uneaten food? What uh, human waste are we going to have? This is all tied together and must be managed as efficiently as possible, which means not only does the food supply need to be really streamlined, but also we need to think about, well, what wastes are going to be generated and how do we minimize or reuse those wastes. Variety is going to be key for keeping astronauts healthy both physically and mentally. And for these multi-year missions, just pre-packaged food is, is not going to cut it. And this is where growing their own food on Mars is going to be critical. To make a food supply that has enough variety to sustain humans, it really will have to be a mixture of, you know, prepackaged food, even hydroponic gardens or cellular agriculture to make meat. Mixing it up in this way will really help to prevent menu fatigue and will give astronauts these more like familiar and enjoyable meals. What happens if the food supply fails? In this case, it's not just an inconvenience, it is life or death, which means reliability is non-negotiable. The food supply must essentially be fail-safe. If an equipment malfunctions or a certain crop fails, it cannot lead to disaster. 
which means every single part of the food chain from preparing meals to growing crops has to be rigorously tested and validated that it is going to work under the worst case scenario, under terrible environmental conditions like those that are found on Mars. Finally, food preparation has to be quick, easy, and simple. I mean, high usability because astronauts have really demanding schedules and they can't spend too much time or too much of their energy into preparing meals. In space, preparing a meal like chopping up ingredients or mixing is complicated by the fact of like, how are we going to do this in microgravity? Plus there's some added safety challenges like uh, how are we gonna prevent burns or someone from chopping off a finger? So really this usability I think would be a real balance between making it as similar as you can, you know, preparing a meal on Earth while also balancing how many resources like time, energy is going to be used to prepare these meals. I really believe a successful food system will lay the foundation for a human presence on Mars and maybe beyond. And if we get it right, this could be a new era of space exploration.